Student Minister Abdul Iman Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. I greet all of you with the greeting words of peace of Assalamu alaikum. We further bear witness to the coming of that one who was prophesied to come, and that one being styled in the scripture as one who comes like a thief in the night, meaning that he flew under the radar because he did not want to be detected. He came, and that one is Master Far of Muhammad to intervene into the affairs of the so-called American Negro here in this wilderness called North America. He found one from among us who had the right heart, who had the right spirit to carry a message that would take him into 44 years of work among us as a people. That one is the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And he had a helper that he prayed for that would help him to deliver the word even as Moses had a helper in Aaron. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad has a helper in the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. In their names, I greet you again. Once again, assalamu alaikum. I thank Allah for his mercy. I thank the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan for allowing me to serve my nation in this capacity. Uh, we, we don't take this lightly. This is his platform. Right. This is his rostrum, if you will. Yes. Not this physical piece of wood or stone, whatever the rostrum may be. But it is the platform that he allows us to represent him in a manner we hope that is acceptable to Almighty God, Allah, his Christ, and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I stand here before you this morning as a convict. Hmm. Not that I have uh, stood before a magistrate or a judge in this world and have been sentenced to uh, uh, prison or whatever, but I stand before you as a convict in that word when it is put in motion you have conviction I am a convict of the faith that I have accepted and strive to live by one who is uh, careful of the words that we speak one who is careful of the acts that we do one who is careful of how we treat one another because God said, whenever you look at the black man and woman, you're looking at God. If Psalms 2 and 7 is true, and it is, it says, ye are all God's children of the Most High God. So that means that we have some growing to do because what have we created if God is the creator of all things? What have we created in our lives? You know, some of us, prior to Islam, were hell racers. <laughs> no, for real. Hell racers would lie at the drop of a hat, steal, connive, you know, but something happened to us that a word would come that when we accept it in our hearts, then it has the transformative power to change. People who were shooting dope every day, filling their veins with heroin and cocaine, huh? that would stop immediately brother on the prayer line this morning said that one of the brothers 
who had come to Islam in New York under the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. He had been a junkie for 20 years. Mm -hmm. That's right, that's what he said. And he said his mother tried everything to help him get off of drugs. But when he accepted Islam, and he be, uh, decided to give his life to the principles of Islam, which is the nature in which God created men. Yes. Yes. That's your nature. Yes. You can't join Islam. Well, you can't join Islam. But you are really not converted to Islam. All we can do is accept mm -hmm. right. Islam. Mm -hmm. Accept our own and what? Yourself. Be yourself. Well, what is yourself? A righteous Muslim. Well, what is that? One who submits to do the will of God. Things that uh, come with that, you know, there's a lot of different things that are associated with this day. Um, it is called Resurrection Day. It is uh, that day that Jesus was... Uh, killed on Friday and resurrected on Sunday. That's only two days, but they say he rose on the third day. What is the meaning of all this that uh, we have been given? And what is all this business about Easter eggs? Supposed to be laid by a bunny rabbit rather than a chicken. These are the words of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. He says, why, sisters, must you go out and buy a new Easter bonnet? Mm -hmm. And why on this day, on this day, do we find it necessary to enrich the rich by buying new garments to wear on our fashion show in church on Easter Sunday? Mm -hmm. I know I used to do that. Mm -hmm. I used to love to dress up, go to, go to church, put on a new suit and that kind of thing. But why do we do that? What does that have to do with the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Then another mystery here is that they say he died on Friday and they call it Good Friday. I tried to figure that one out and I came to the conclusion that the good in it was that his death and not his birth nor ministry meant the beginning of the religion or the faith and his death meant salvation for those for whom they say he died. Now, if a man dies for your sins and my sins, could you tell me, please, why there is a judgment? If he died for the sins, why do we have to be judged based on our the way we live our lives? If he paid it all, right? See, there's some deception going on here yes, sir. that we intend to uncover so that you cannot be fooled again and not blame uh, or not live your life riotously and then say Jesus paid it all. Mm -hmm. So the minister goes on to say that Now, if a man dies for your sins and my sins, could you tell me why there's a judgment? Then he says, no, wait, listen. If he died for my sins, then I don't have to pay because my debt has been paid. Mm -hmm. all right. yes. all right. So what is all this talk about punishment of hell if he died for me? And I don't know of any righteous man that God lets him die for wicked people. And then after he dies, he takes back his life. But what is that all about? They used to say, if you give somebody something and take it back, you were not such a good fellow. You didn't mean for him to have it in the first place. So if a man dies for us, well, that's all right. We understand that. Sometimes a mother will give her life for her child in a burning fire. But she don't come back a few days later claiming to have died for her child, but is still alive. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus, as that story goes in the 18th chapter of St. John, when they crucified Jesus, this is all symbolic, brothers and sisters. You got to understand. 
that the Bible is written in symbolic language. Now, the question is asked, is Jesus historical? Yes. Is Jesus prophetic? Yes. Which one? Which one? There are four different Jesuses that are manifested throughout time at the end of the ways of sin by the open enemy who is opposer to God. That one being the Caucasian people. Now that's not to say that you don't have sin and I don't have sin in me. But he was made to personify the evil that you and I did not have the capacity to perform. Come on. Come on. You can't even think Come on. of anything of evil that is not in the world today. Come on. That's right. That's right. He has taken evil to the nth degree. Whatever God says don't do, he says it's all right. That's right. Yes, sir. It's all right. It's all right to lie, but... You know, if you do have to lie, it's okay. Just tell a little white lie. <laughs> See, he symbolized it all in color. White was pure. White was all right. But black, oh man, you better get back. Black was evil. Black magic. I've been blackballed. Hmm? Chocolate cake is devil's food cake. White. Hmm? <laughs> White cake is what? Angel, angel food angel cake. <laughs> All the angels are white. Yeah. Right. In the Bible. All of them. You know, where where were you during the last supper? In the kitchen? Where were you? But they say you were you were cursed because Ham looked on his father on his nakedness during the time of Noah. And for that, he was cursed to be black and to uh, be the servant of others. Mm. No, <laughs> no. You are black, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us. You are black because you are original. Right. You are the original people. That's right. Black, he says, it's not a color. Black is the essence from whence all color comes from. Yes, sir. Say that again. So when you have black, original, right? right. Then you extract out of it brown, the brown man. You extract out of it the yellow man. And you extract out of it the Caucasian or the white man. Now, red, the red man is not in that 6,000 year grafting process. Red and black really are together. However, the red man was exiled from India 16,000 years ago for breaking the law of Islam. 16,000 years ago. But I thought Islam was only 1,400 years old. No. That's when Prophet Muhammad received a revelation to create what is called Quran, that which is to be, that which is to be recited. That truth, Al-Nur, the light, yes. huh? many good names the Quran has. Yes. And all good names belong to Almighty God, Allah. Rabbits have many, many, many baby rabbits. Is that right? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Come on. And, you know, <laughs> the enemy took that because that is a part of the pagan worship yeah. that all of this stems from. Yes, sir. Easter is not a Christian name. Mm -hmm. Easter is none other than Astarte, one of the titles of Beltis, the Queen of Heaven. Astarte was early introduced in Britain along with the Druids as Ishtar. Okay? That's where Easter comes from. She was also a sex goddess. Mm -hmm. This is where the rabbits come in, the fertility. Mm -hmm. Eggs, representing fertility, mm -hmm. right? And it is widely, widely known today as the Resurrection Day, mm -hmm. pertain, pertaining to the man, Jesus, 
the Christ. Jesus Christ, as many of us call him, was a man from God, a prophet. The Holy Quran teaches us. Jesus says of himself that he did not speak on his own. But whatever the Father commanded him to speak, that is what he spoke. Is that right? Yes. Whatever, whatever the, the Father commanded him to do, that is what he did. What he is that said. right? Yes, yes, sir. So Jesus was sent by the Father. Right. So I asked the question, is the sender and the sent equal? No. You send your son to the store. <laughs> You gave an instruction, and he obeyed you. Who's in the driver's seat there? The one who sent the one to go somewhere, is that right? Yes, sir. Jesus was sent into the world to preach freedom, justice, and equality, and the end of Satan's rule. However, Paul saw him as a man born out of due season. What do you mean? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that the Caucasian people only had 6,000 years to rule. Mm -hmm. Listen now, this is the big picture. I'm going to give you the big picture. Yes, sir. 6,000 years to rule. So in the Genesis, it says, six days shall thou rule, O Adam, but on the seventh day you will be made to rest. What does that mean? He had six days. A day to the Lord is as what? A thousand years. So he had 6,000 years to rule the planet. Allah gives rulership in terms. In the beginning, it was nothing but the original black man who ran everything. Then the brown man had a term. The red man had a term. The yellow man had a term. And eventually, the Caucasian or the white man had a term. Now, this is not no hate teaching. Right. Come on. This is some information that you need to know to free yourself from the bondage that the enemy of God have shackled us here and here that we cannot do anything for ourselves. So, six days. <clears throat> now, when Paul said he's a man born out of due season, what did he mean? You mean that he, you mean that he, he came too early, uh, Paul? Yes. He came on the fifth day, meaning he came five in the year 5,000, where the enemy had two more thousand years to rule. So the Jesus of 2,000 years ago was a sign of a man who would be brought up through a resurrection process. Huh? He would be resurrected from a dead mental state. Right. Hmm? He would be brought up from that condition. Then he would be given the work and the role of a Jesus. Yes. What did Jesus do? He opened the eyes of the blind. Come on. Yes. He made the deaf hear and the dumb speak. You should have seen black people before the Honorable Elijah Muhammad came and raised up our people to a higher level of existence and understanding. Malcolm was one of his chief students. Hmm? Minister Farrakhan, a chief, chief student hmm? who helps the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, even as Aaron helped Moses during the first 40 years of the mission of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, because we were nationalistic is that time. What time is it? Nation time. Hmm? That was the cry of the 50s and the 60s. Right? So now you have the time of the general resurrection of the dead, right? That's what we're in right now, the general resurrection of the dead. We are in the time of the judgment as well. 
the judgment where God has made it, it made a decision. But he wants you and I to be in line with his decision. He don't want to just take the enemy out and you still love your enemy. He wants you to be in accordance with his decision. Yes, sir. So he allows the winds to blow. Hmm? George Floyd. Huh? Michael Brown. Huh? Are you not Aubrey? Uh, what's his last name? Ahmad Aubrey. Aubrey. It keeps coming and coming and coming. Yes. This thing has got to stop. And then I just shot a, a brother in the back of the head the other day. God wants you to come over to his thinking so that when he punishes your and my enemy and his enemy, you will be in agreement. That's right. We can find that in the scripture. Now, Abraham, the friend of God, Yes. Right. Come on. I tried, but I couldn't find 50. He said, go back and find 40. Mm -hmm. Abraham went back to, to the city to try to find 40 righteous. Mm -hmm. He couldn't find them. Mm -hmm. He came back. That thing got to go on back, back and forth with God and Abraham. Right. God's patient now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The master of patience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He had to be patient with his own self-development mm -hmm. from total yeah. darkness. Come on. Come on. Huh? <laughs> He's very patient. That's where the attribute Al Sabur comes from. From his patience. All good names belong to God. Is that right? So Abraham goes back and forth. And he, he says, Go back and find me five. Abraham went and could not find five. He said, go back and find me one beside Lot and his family and I'll save the whole city. Right. He couldn't find one. He couldn't find one. As the scripture says, no, there are none righteous. No, not one. That very day, Allah, God, destroyed the twin cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. What was their sin? Mm -hmm. Their sin was being attracted to the same sex. Right. That was their sin. Yes. Now, like I said before, the enemy of this world says whatever God says, don't do. He says it's all right. That's right. Now you got more homosexuals having more rights than black folks. Yeah. Black folks. Right. Yes. Now we, all of us have probably somebody in our families that have been touched by this. And it's not their fault because the enemy has science and chemistry that he's using. You think that you're born that way. I read my brother's book, Dr. Wesley Muhammad, The Assault on black manhood and black masculinity. Mm -hmm. And he says in that book that the scientists have discovered a, uh, is it, is an enzyme, got the exact terminology, uh, but it is something in the brain that is released, right? When the child is still an embryo, just being formed. Mm -hmm. It comes from the brain to determine uh, the genitalia, mm -hmm. male or female. Then there's a second surge of this chemical from the brain mm -hmm. that goes into the system that determines the mentality that goes with mm -hmm. the genitalia. Wow. The enemy have figured out a way to block that second surge. Are you listening? Yes, sir. So yeah, you, you, you're born that way, but who fixed it that you're born that way? Yes, sir. Let's move forward. This day, this Easter, is not on the same day every year. Is that right? Right. 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 <laughs> this 
day, this year, according to uh, our dear beloved student minister in Chicago, the national assistant to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrar Khan, Brother Student Minister Ishmael Muhammad said in his lecture this morning how Easter, cro uh, I was going to say crossover, Passover, Passover and Ramadan yes, sir. fall in the same area, fall in this, almost on the same day, in the right. same time, mm -hmm. even though Ramadan is 30 days in the lunar calendar, mm -hmm. right? But what has happened as the pagans began to worship the sun, that's why they call the S-O-N the son of God. But it's really the S-U-N they worship. And the whole, uh, the whole teaching that this virgin birth. It's nothing new. They have that same story in many different countries. The same story is in, in Egypt. Is that right? Yeah. Osiris, Isis, and Horus, right? Born of a virgin, right? All of this is combined into what is known as Christianity. Now, in the year 325 AD, Constantine called for a council meeting. 32 bishops came to that meeting and they determined that they would harmonize the pagan worship and the true word of God. And that's what they come up with in the various writings. They say it's from God, but they kind of fixed it up a little bit. Case in point, in the 10th chapter of Jeremiah, dealing with the Christmas tree, it says, don't go out in the forest and cut down the tree and fasten it with nails and deck it with silver and gold. That is the work of the pagans. That is the belief of the pagans. Well, why is it in the Bible? If the Bible is God's word, and you have a lot of our churches, our brothers and sisters, during that time of the year, having trees, Christmas trees, in their church. It's sun worship. The balls, the bulbs on the tree represent the sun. The, the, the wreath represents the sun, the yuletide log represents sun worship because they would build fires mm -hmm. thinking that that would help bring the sun back and after December 25th the days start getting longer after the winter solstice which is the 21st of December the shortest day of the year then they said oh this is the birth of the sun mm -hmm. so they named that 25th day of December the birth of Jesus the son of God. Mm. But they were really worshiping the S-U-N right. God. Right. There's so much to this. Brother Hannibal warned me, he said, Brother, don't go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> I might not get back. <laughs> Spring, right? Where you equinox, meaning equal, right? Same length of sunlight, same length of nighttime, right? Sun rises at six, sun sets at six. 12 hours here, 12 hours there, okay? That's the marking, that's the starting point. So the vernal equinox, then you have the uh, first full moon after the vernal equinox. Then you have the first Sunday after the full moon as Easter. Mm -hmm. What it is, is you have the crossover or Passover, which the sun now passes over the equator and now is going down in a southern 
trajectory, mm -hmm. right? Giving us longer days, day by day, until it reaches June 21st. Now it's June 22nd, which is the summer solstice. Mm -hmm. The longest day of the year. And the opposite of that is the shortest day of the year, December 21st or 22nd. So this crossover is the Passover is calculated in the same manner. So this Passover represents the blood of the lamb being on the doorpost of those who were uh, considered uh, Egyptians hmm. to escape the plague of death that Moses had declared on the Egyptians. This lamb, the lamb's blood, they put a strike. What is a strike? When you bowl, right? And you put you make a strike. What is the symbol of a strike? It's an X, right? So that X. See, the scripture is highly symbolic. Yes. Highly symbolic. And if you don't understand the symbolism, you can get lost in thinking that it's literal. So this X, it's no accident that when you come into the nation of Islam, you receive an X. Because now I'm an ex-Negro. I'm an ex-dope seller. An ex-dope user. A ex drinker, huh? A ex liar, a ex thief. Ex used to be right, but in uh, Roman numerals, the ex gives you what? Ten. Ten. So now my power is generated through nothing that I am, through the one that comes before us to generate the power of 10 through our submission and obedience to do his will. Now, this blood of the lamb, this lamb, Jesus is styled as a lamb. Is that right? An innocent animal, not a full grown sheep, but a lamb. A baby sheep, right? But the scripture says that he was the lamb, but now he, in the end, he comes up as a lion. Because the lion of Judah must be awakened, and this one, this man, that comes up as a lion. Oh, man. I'm going to let you hear this lion right now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get scared. <laughs> Don't get scared. Oh, Lord. Where am I at? Okay, here it is. Isn't it is? Yes, sir. Come on. 
Everybody ain't gonna be the devil. He's a, a man that falls right in line with that title of Jesus and even Messiah. Mm -hmm. Messiah number two. Mm -hmm. Now, in this time that we're living in, the Jesus that would reappear would not be the one 2,000 years ago. But he would be a man who comes under the name or title Jesus. And that's why many of our Christian brothers and sisters miss it because they're expecting the man that lived 2,000 years ago to reappear. Come on. Not so. Not so. In the story or in the scripture, where it says that Jesus was crucified and one of his rich followers by the name of Joseph from Arimathea mm. pleaded with uh, Caesar for his body, got his body and paid expensive herbs and spices and wrapped him in cloth and put him in a tomb that had not been used for anyone. Now, when he was in the tomb, they went back to see him. He wasn't there. The next time they see him, Martha, no, Mary, when they go to the tomb, they see two angels sitting on the tomb. And then Mary is asked by Jesus who had disguised himself as a gardener, right? One who cleans the weeds and makes sure the uh, sepulchres, the tombs, the area is clean in the cemetery. They thought Jesus was a gardener. Why did he have to disguise himself if he was already resurrected from the dead? He was still hiding because they still wanted to kill him. I guess they regretted that they didn't break his legs like they broke the other two on his, on his right and his left. They dispensed with the breaking of the legs when it came to him. So Jesus went to his disciples and said, look, it's me. Thomas didn't believe him. He said, I, 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 you got to show me your hands and you got to show me where they stuck you. <laughs> so the term doubting Thomas comes as a result of Thomas doubting who Jesus was. Now, that's the historical man. Jesus does not become the Christ until he ascends mm -hmm. to the Father. Is that right? Yes, sir. Did you know that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad fulfilled the aspect of Jesus in our midst? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We call him the exalted Christ. Yes, sir. Why? Because he ascended to the Father. Mm -hmm. Well, where's the Father? Up in the sky. Yeah, up in the sky. How do you understand that? Come on. There's a wheel in the sky in which the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was able to go 
in a vision-like experience, but more than a vision experience. Hmm. Come on. Where he was able to hear the voice of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And he said, brother, there's one more thing for you to do. Then you will be able to come back and see me hmm. face to face. Hmm. So the minister was returned and he began to do works. Works, works. There's so much history to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. That's right, that's you know? right. And as, as Jesus asked the question, who do they say I am? Mm. <clears throat> Jesus asked his uh, uh, disciples, who do they, the people, the masses, who do they say I am? Some say you are John the Baptist. Some say you are Elijah. Some, they was given all kind of names, right? Then Jesus asked them directly, who do you say I am? Come on. You have walked with me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so they saw him as that one that was, hmm, I can't say prophesied, because the, the writing that was written then is being manifested or fulfilled today. Yeah. So who do they say I am? The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is asking that question. Mm -hmm. Who do they say I am? And I just so happen to have this book. Mm. Who do they say I am? I'd like to share some things with you from it. Now, I mean, there's some very powerful people in here that uh, bear have bear borne witness right. to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And uh, I want to share something with you. I mean, there's so many. Here's one, Dr. Boyce Watkins. Minister Farrakhan fascinates many black people because he represents a type of freedom and truth that they can only dream about. Mm -hmm. See, when fear is in you, and that we were made to fear when we were little babies, yeah. you won't take a free step. You'll toe dip. You'll test the water, you'll toe dip. And say, oh, that, that freedom water is too cold. Yes, sir. <laughs> I, need, I need some warmer water. So you only can go so far. Mm -hmm. Then he yanks, his, he yanks the chain back. Mm -hmm. Get back over here, nigga. What you think you doing? Mm -hmm. Will Smith, you slapping somebody. Man, you, you, you threw in Hollywood. Now, I don't know if that's the case but they have a way of controlling their Negroes. That's right. Come on. Farrakhan is not that kind of man. That's right. Even those who disavow him in public rely on him behind the closed doors because he has the courage and capacity to confront obstacles that leave most black Americans in fear. He doesn't bend, fold, or change his tune due to corporate or political pressure. And he doesn't spend his time tap dancing for white people. Mm -hmm. He also has a degree of ownership of his own being that is nothing short of extraordinary. Mm -hmm. The truth is that he has negotiated a relationship with white America in which they may not love him, but they do fear him and respect him. Now, that's one. <clears throat> I want to read something if I can find it. I have it earlier, it was, it was actually Mike Tyson and, and uh, uh, my man Larry King was putting, putting, him, putting the question on him and uh, he, he answered it very intelligent. Mike, Mike Tyson, very intelligent now. Mm -hmm. Very, very intelligent. Oh man. I thought I had it marked, but I don't. Uh, 
He says, finally, some blacks in difficult straits merely dip into Islam without developing a formal relationship, such as O.J. Simpson, who read the Quran while he was incarcerated. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a, a link that uh, Daniel Pipes, December 18, 2003, updated June 27, 2010, is uh, a link of uh, blacks who, sh who stress um, messengers and prophets, reformers, but none had the power to overcome Satan's world. Mm -hmm. The Jesus that lived 2,000 years ago, he did not have that power. So this dispensation that we live in today, even though the prophets come and does a good work. Satan's power has not been broken. That's why Jesus is so important because Jesus overcomes Satan, then opens the door for everybody. A prophetic Jesus. A fulfiller? No. 25% is history. 75% written of the man under the title and function of Jesus is prophetic. He, Jesus, is born of a woman, flesh and blood. In Romans 1 and 3, it says, Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. Now, when we talk about resurrection from the dead, we're not talking about going out in the cemetery. Mm. Come on, brother. The physical dead will never be brought back. That's right. That's right. There is a life after death. There is a hereafter. Mm. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad did not teach us much about that because we just came out of a spooky mentality. Mm. Come on. We don't have to fear death. When you live your life according to righteous principles, you don't have to fear death. Now, the historical Jesus, he was born of a woman. In the Quran, it talks about Jesus coming or being uh, born. Let me go to the Surah uh, 19. Maryam. This is the only book named after the mother of Jesus found in scripture anywhere. The Bible doesn't have a chapter or a book by the name of Mary. The Quran does. Under this section 2, starting with verse 16, it reads, and mention Mary in the book when she drew aside from her family to an eastern place. So she screened herself from them. Then we sent to her our spirit, and it appeared to her as a well-made man. She said, I flee for refuge from thee to the beneficent. That's one of the names of Allah, beneficent. He's beneficent, he's merciful. If thou art one guarding against evil, he said, the one that was sent to her, he said, how can I, he said, I am only bearer of a message of thy Lord that I, the person sent, that I will give thee a pure boy. She said, Mary, how can I have a son and no mortal has yet touched me? Nor have I been unchaste. He said, so it will be. Thy Lord says it's easy for me. And that we may make him a sign to men and a mercy from us. And it is a matter decreed. Then she conceived him and withdrew with him.
to a remote place. And the throes of childbirth drove her to the trunk of a palm tree. She said, oh, would that I had died before this and had been a thing quite forgotten. You know, sisters, I know you can bear witness to this, that have children. You know, sometimes, you know, you might, your husband might be there and you holding his hand, but you might be cussing him out. In a, in a nice way. But it's clear, brothers and sisters, sometimes we miss we miss key words. That I will give that I will give thee a pure boy. How can I have a son and no mortal has yet touched me? You can't until a man touches you, right? That you have insemination and have a baby, a new life forming in your womb. Jesus was a natural man, both historical and the fulfillment of that which was prophesied of him. A natural man, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, a natural man, yes. the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, a natural man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But we're so spooky. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir so spooky mm -hmm. that we don't understand cause and effect. Mm. Jesus was only a prophet, the one that lived 2,000 years ago. But this one here, this one here has power. Now, I was blessed to be in the company of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I asked him a question. I said, Brother Minister, because the night before, there was a question that was asked at the table. The brother asked, if Jesus, from, well, it was actually from his niece, if Jesus was on the cross and he was God, why didn't he take himself down? The minister didn't, the minister didn't deal with it then, but I, I raised the question again the next day when I had the blessing of being in his company. And he said, at that time, that Jesus was not developed enough to take himself down. But he said, this Jesus is. Now, the slave master and their children, that of Jesus. Now, you might say, well, I know my pastor, he might be doing that too. But who, why aren't, why isn't the enemy of Freedom, justice, and equality attacking your pastor. Mm -hmm. You can tell a man by his enemies. Yes. Yes. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has enemies which are the enemies of God. So he is the one. Uh, you need not look for another. He is the one. He's paid a price. I mean, there's so many similarities between, and then you heard him for yourself. Oh, yes. So many similarities of the work of this man. So, as I begin to conclude, I, uh, I thank a lot for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Yes, sir. I thank a lot for his example. I thank a lot that. He has shown us what a strong black man looks like. Yes, yes. I thank Allah that he has shown us what a strong marriage is all about. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Allah has blessed me this past week to celebrate our 50th year anniversary. Oh, All praises praise due to Allah. Yes. Minister Farrakhan is an example 
of that. Mm -hmm. I thank Allah for Minister Farah Khan to go into the prison houses mm -hmm. and be an example of teaching those who are behind the wall. Right. Those who may not never be, be able to get out. Mm -hmm. I'll leave you with this story. We were with the Honorable Minister Louis Farah Khan when he went to San Quentin to visit Stanley Tookie Williams on death row mm -hmm. in San Quentin. Mm -hmm. The cell that they met in was so small, it was, uh, I believe, a uh, six by eight, mm -hmm. like a parking stall mm -hmm. with walls around it. Mm -hmm. And uh, David, Barbara Becknell, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, Student Minister Abdullah Muhammad, Minister Tony Muhammad at that time, Abdul Malik Saeed Muhammad, and Tukey Williams. In that space. In that space. The man, Stanley Tukey Williams, wrote children's books and received Nobel Peace Prize That's for the right. literature. That's right. There was a, a campaign to get his, his death sentence reduced. And uh, the governor of California at that time, Arnold Schwarzenegger, he rejected the, rejected the uh, clemency. Um, you know, Stanley, he used to be out on Venice Beach pumping that iron, right? He was huge. And you know, that was the time when Arnold was just coming up. And so there was a little, this is what they say, there's a little jealousy there that may have uh, been a part of the decision that Governor Schwarzenegger made at the time. But we heard a, a vi uh, audio tape of our brother before they executed him. And the minister did speak at his memorial service. But on that tape, he said that he had to make a decision. That decision was, was he going to be a man or was he going to be a beast? Because as a gangbanger, you on the animal level. When you can shoot your brother down, shoot your sister down. You're on an animal level. So he, had, he said he had to make a, a decision whether he was going to be a man or a beast. He said, I chose to be a man, a human being. And so you have a choice today whether you would stand with a man that loves you so much that he's willing to challenge everything and everyone that is against God's way for you and I. So with that, I leave you with the greeting words of peace of our, as I came before you. As-salamu alaykum. Ramadan Mubarak. Brothers and sisters, how many are here for the first time? Could I see uh, your hands? Thank you, sister. Thank you. Anyone here just visiting with us that have not accepted this great truth yet? I have a couple of questions. First, are there any questions for me based on what we've talked about today? Anyone? Okay. I'll go for that. Um, now I have a few questions. How many of you believe that what we talked about today was the truth? and good for us as a people. Let me see your hands. How many of you that bear witness that it is the truth?